All right, let's um, call this out to order. Um, before we appoint people, let's go around and um, introduce ourselves. So I'm Alex Samarsh, I'm the media director um, uh, for the town. I'm Crystal Jackson. I represent several committees for the town and excited to be on this one. I'm Sue Brown, I'm the assistant director at the Happy Public Library. Amy Hyden, and I'm the chair in the finance committee. Really? Uh, I'm Pat Layton, just citizen um, without broadband. Yep. That's right. I feel uh, Annie McKenzie, superintendent of schools. And then folks on Zoom. Uh, I'm Roland Mandler, and I live on Rocky Hill Road, just a citizen of the town. And you're also a member of the committee. Yeah. Yeah. And my name is Lisa Wan. I work at Kim Lee Horn, so one of the consultants. And I'm Cody Berger. I'm also with Kim Lee Horn and one of the consultants. So are you both in Walham or no? You're Bill, and, Lisa Bill and I are in Waltham. Right. Okay. Good. I'm out of Virginia. Okay. Perfect. Um so just a few few quick things to do. Um, appoint the chair. What's up? Oh yeah. Here, here. Spirited pool game. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So who wants who wants to be chair? Who do we want to appoint to be chair? Well, we need a first and a second for that. <laughs> I'd like to nominate Alex as the chair. Oh, okay. I'd, I'd like to second, second that. And I second that thing. All right. So we need to do a roll call because this is virtual. So Fiden? Yes. Brown? Yes. Jackson? Yes. Marsh? Yes. Yes. Mackenzie? Um, Roland, I forgot your last name. It's Mandler. Mandler. Can you vote yes? Yes. Yes. All right. And we need an appointment for clerk. We've got really good note taking skills. <laughs> I didn't do so a lot half when I was, I had to do both chair and clerk for finance. And then, oh my goodness, it took me forever. I, it takes long time. It just takes me. I had to watch your show. I had to watch. Thank goodness they're recorded because I had to watch them over again. Yeah. So now I'm going to be there once, I twice. It's a lot of work. I'm not. You're not doing okay. I have enough. I'm not, I'm, I'm not taking any more on that. That's fair. We could table for next time. We need to. I can. I can. I can do the notes for it. Um, so it's not say set meeting schedule for the next item, but since Kimmy Horn's here, why don't we go right ahead and um, look at their presentation? All right. Cody, do you see my screen? Awesome. Thank you so much, Alec. Thank you everybody for attending. Um, today, this is our agenda. On top of your own agenda, we have our other agenda, but we went through some of the introductions and the Kimley Horn team. Bill Skelly, who is a project manager, is not here today. Um, he is also part of this project. We're going to discuss what is digital equity? What's the purpose of this project? What will this plan development process look like? the timeline and having an open discussions of no needs and issues. This is the team and we introduce ourselves, but Bill is um, this gentleman over here. So there's a lot, like what is digital equity? And I am gonna read it verbatim. So we wanna make sure when we are preparing a plan, we're on the same page. So a digital equity, it's a condition in which all individuals and the communities, they have information technology capacity, IT technology, um, IT capacity needed for full participation in society, democracy, and economy. 
So digital equity is necessary for civic and culturally participation, employment, lifelong learning, and access to essential services. So really aiming to bridge the digital divide by providing everyone with affordable access to internet, devices, and digital, digital skills. And let's remind ourselves what is the difference between equality versus equity, because this is a big discussion. So equality is giving everybody the same exact thing and equity, we, everybody gets what they actually need. So in this example here is that for e equality, everybody gets the same ladder, but for equity, we really want to make sure some people would have a, a taller ladder or who has a harder time reaching the fruit. So we really want to make sure that when we use the word equity, we acknowledge the systematic barriers that must be dismantled before achieving equality for all. When we first began this meeting, somebody asked, hey, what's, what's, what's going to go in a digital equity? And there are different components. The first one is the adequate computing devices, really asking the questions, do residents have access that do ask, do residents have devices that are adequate, needs appropriate, and are devices affordable or otherwise accessible? We want to answer these questions. The next one is internet connection. Do residents experience internet connection that is affordable, fast, and reliable? Can all residents access the internet? And the third one is literacy and skills, really understanding do residents have the ability to use technology and the internet to achieve their needs? Are there concerns around trust, privacy, and safety exist? So we really wanna make sure that we're answering different types of questions as we think about the different components of the digital equity plan. So the purpose of this plan is to understand the landscape of digital equity in Hadley. We want to help prepare the town for future funding opportunities. We want to help guide equitable implementation to ensure that all benefit from infrastructural and programmatic investments. So this is the purpose of the plan. And we are really thankful that you all are volunteering your time to be part of this committee. And we want to ask some things like, what do we expect from you all? Because we all love action items and homework. But really, we want you all to provide us insight into the community, really serving as a conduit between the community and us. Help us identify stakeholders for interviewing to gauge interests or what's happening. Um, how best to engage with the community, because you all know this a lot better than us. And then lastly, prioritizing actions and recommended implementation strategies. So those are some things that we want from you all. And I'll pass this over to Cody. So thank you again for y'all's time this week um, for today and, and moving forward as well. Um, as y'all are aware, I'm sure the Massachusetts Broadband Institute was established to help unserved and underserved communities gain access to broadband. And as Lisa alluded to earlier, it's not necessarily just a gap in service providers. Um, sometimes it's a gap in speeds or differences in speeds, and sometimes it's going to be the case of um, literacy, so digital literacy. Uh, so Mass Broadband and us through them are assisting communities with developing roadmaps to increase access and the use of the internet and find those ways that we can help bridge both of those gaps, all of those gaps that may be applicable to each of the communities that we're serving in this case, you know, in your case, Hadley. Uh, this includes support in research and development of grant applications or other ways that we can support the implementation and improvement plans to address those current barriers. So why does all of this matter? I'm sure most of y'all know this, but we want to just make sure that we're um, that we're saying it out loud. 
COVID-19 really highlighted the importance of broadband access nationwide, and a lack of digital equity impacts our communities significantly by hindering access to economic prosperity, healthcare, education, and civic and social engagement. We talk a lot about the social side of things, but uh, COVID-19 really helped us understand the importance of all of those other aspects as well. So we're looking at the gaps in Hadley through both of the lenses. What is broadband? We're looking at it through both of those lenses of um, broadband speeds according to the FCC, which could be download speeds of at least 25 miles, uh, <laughs> uh, megabytes per second, upload speeds of at least three megabytes per second, but the other lens being um, some new federal funding that are tied that are saying we actually need 100 megabytes per second for download speeds and upload speeds of 20 or even 100 megabytes per second to try to, again, balance out the scales a little bit better. Uh, just because the community has access to broadband doesn't or, or to the internet doesn't necessarily mean that it's broadband speeds. And so that's part of what we're working at, looking at. And it's going to be us looking at both fixed wireline, cable, internet, fi uh, fiber, as well as mobile services that are available in the various communities we're looking at. Uh, so beyond that, what I just alluded to, speed matters. And why does speed matter is because just having access to the internet is not enough, especially for those trying to have a reasonable conversation with their healthcare providers or trying to actively participate in homework, watch videos that are required for their um, for tele teleworking in college, things like we're doing right now, you can't be as productive and it can definitely get in the way of your ability to have um, good education or a successful job. Um, and we wanna help bridge those gaps and make things more equitable across, um, across Massachusetts. And again, specifically, we're, we're looking at Hadley right now. Um, so the overall plan development process, what is that going to look like? Well, we have a bunch of information that's available publicly through the FCC, through the Mass Broadband's website, through census data, but that doesn't tell us the whole story. So what we want to get to really help build a, a helpful report, right, just saying those data is not going to help tell the whole story. So we're going to be gathering a lot of information through the community uh, or from the community through you all. Um, this is going to be through interviews with key stakeholders, like Lisa mentioned earlier, public charrettes, um, the public survey that I'm going to talk about a little bit more in a minute, um, and through you all in general, through the context that you have, especially having a couple of citizens, um, you know, just just citizens on the committee. Um, you you both definitely have a lot of knowledge, but also the rest of you that live in and around the community um, are going to be able to tell us a lot about what it's like to live there because we don't. And again, that type of information, that context isn't on any website anywhere. It's gonna be coming from you all providing it. And again, the various citizens providing that. That'll help us get a real understanding of the state of broadband in your community and help us identify the gaps and potential actions. Some common themes that Mass Broadband Institute identified across the Commonwealth are slow Wi-Fi, one service provider, high cost to consumers, and digital literacy gaps. But again, we want to drill down into what, what's the situation in Hadley. So what we've seen so far from a data perspective um, is a handful of unserved and underserved locations, but the majority have access to broadband speed internet. Um, so we want to help understand what are we missing. And we've only gotten responses from three different people on the um, public survey that the Mass Broadband Institute has has provided, um, and we're sure that that's probably partially from a lack of um, advertising, pro lack of knowledge, maybe a lack of access to again literacy, digital literacy, or access to the internet. Could be any of those reasons, but so that's some of that context that we're not getting. Uh, so according to the data, plenty of access. So we definitely are going to be relying heavily on those on those interviews for Hadley specifically. So where we go from here, as you can see, we're currently at the end of July, early August, we're in that data mining phase. And we've basically just been looking at what's on the internet. Now that we've got this first steering committee meeting, we're gonna be getting more into that, um, that further, that deeper dive 
into the data, and that will be through the interviews with stakeholders that you all would recommend. Maybe it's some folks on the steering committee, maybe it's outside of that. Um, and then also that leading into hopefully getting more um, more survey responses that will also play into our, our data that we're able to summarize and kind of read through to see what sorts of trends are out there. Um, and then moving into September and October, we're hoping to have a couple of public charrettes to get the story even more. Again, talk to people where a survey isn't telling you the whole story. Let me really tell you. Again, helping us interview more people and get more context across the entire community. And then once we have more of a base, we'll start working through summarizing our findings and determining where your community's gaps and needs are. So again, what we have right now is basically, we can do some charts that say what your population density looks like, what your access looks like, um, and then we'll actually get into the meat and potatoes once we get through those more interview stakeholders or interviews with the stakeholders and, and other citizens. And then that'll all lead to um, our needs assessment, our development of needs assessment and actions, um, and our, our report, which we're uh, anticipating late December, early January for that draft. Um, and that would again be after another me another meeting with you all to start talking about what we're seeing, what those trends are, um, what needs and actions we're starting to kind of come up with uh, to be able to get y'all's buy-in. Uh, so action items as far as what we're asking for from you today. Um, is what's, what you see on the screen, helping us identify the stakeholders for our August interviews so that we can keep, di keep digging into what the current state of broadband is for the community, helping us advertise the public digital equity survey that I mentioned earlier. That's what you see on the screen is kind of a snippet from it in case anyone hasn't seen it yet. Um, we've, got big, we've got copies that you can print paper copies of or that we can make flyers for with QR codes. Again, if access isn't the problem, but maybe cost is, they might have access to be able to take them online, those are definitely available, helping us spread the word so we can get more people's input. Um, and then moving forward, identifying potential locations and dates for those charrettes, getting y'all's thoughts on, as Lisa mentioned earlier, the best way to engage the community. Uh, so that's all that we had as far as a presentation is concerned. Definitely want to open it up for any questions that you have, um, whether it be on the next steps or our overall what our overall process is going to look like um, and anything related to the survey. Uh, Lisa is also, I think, going to drop in the chat the link to the survey so that y'all can maybe brainstorm how you might want to um, share that as well. And we're going to email Alex the, the slide deck, the link to the survey, and then a hard copy of the survey. And um, we could, you know, brainstorm some of the stakeholders for August interviews. Or if you have any questions about the digital equity plan, it's about like a six month process. So you oh, identify for uh, for. So when would you plan on? I, I, um, interviewing the stakeholders for August. We're looking to do, yeah, we're looking to do that over the next several weeks. Okay, so it doesn't have to be like August 1st. It can Correct. be later. Okay. Yep, basically, if you guys need some some time to come up with that, that list of names that you want us to work with as you have them, maybe if you want a couple weeks to pull them together and then send them our way, we can interview in later August. And obviously it'll also depend on their schedules. I know some high profile people can be harder to get on their calendars. There's a lot of vacation in the summer. So we're just leaving August kind of wide open and it can even bleed into September if we need it to. Um, but we're hoping to get those done by the end of August. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I have two questions. Uh, apologies to the group, but these are things you all already know. Community, are you defining community as solely residents who live in Hadley? So I'm from the school department. We had an emergency shelter here. Those students are still in our schools, but they live when students are, when stu families or students qualified under federal homeless laws, they continue to attend our schools and we just transport them from other communities. Do you consider them part of the community or not? I'd say that they're pretty. I well would. I would say anybody who lives, works, schools in the community is part of the community. Okay. Or even those. Then, then my next question. Thank you for that. My next question, and I just saw what you put up there, so maybe uh, it's somewhere else. Um, it, do you want to hear from? I assume you do. Stakeholders who do not speak or read English. In which case, 
how do we get that word out? And are these uh, materials available in languages other than English? Again, the most vulnerable probably. Yes, yes, the available. survey. Yes, the survey. There's there's a few different versions online if we need to provide the paper versions. But I also believe, or I should say, I know the first question is, um, what language do you speak? And I believe after you check whichever that is, it goes into that language. If you say that you speak Spanish, I believe it goes into a Spanish version of the survey. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Um, you yep. This was the first time I saw this survey. So how has this been distributed? You said you're getting no responses, but if nobody's seeing it, how do they know about it? Yeah, that was one question I wanted to ask. Um, I don't know if Alex, if you know of any other ways, the only way that I know of is that Mass Broadband has has said it, it's on their social media. And so that's part of our concern is we don't know how broadly it's getting shared within Hadley specifically, other than just if someone stumbles across it. So I didn't know much about the survey. Um, I do, did know about the bead challenge and I reached out to those who were underserved like Honeypot, Cemetery, and there's a um, home um, up near Moody Bridge. Uh, that I reached out to to help for the whole play they can they did speed tests for the uh um for the beat challenge so I was wondering if that way was here what we were talking about and not the actual survey no yeah I think it's the other and so it's we're basically just relying on on us to put it on the the town's website town social media um but then we've also been brainstorming and hearing from others that you know, printing copies and putting them in cafes or in the library, putting up flyers around in in public and widely used areas um, will also help us with that. So it's part of the where we wanted to ask from from y'all, knowing that you've had some peripheral involvement in it, but this is really just getting going. Have we been doing any of that yet? If not, let's talk about how we can. Let's start. Right. It's it's very normal that, and I should say it's expected. It seems like it's common across the other communities too that. Um, until our town takes ownership and starts um, uh, advertising it ourselves. The only way that anybody's filled it out is through word of mouth or seeing it on the MBI website. Like if it's in the news and someone sees it in the, the news because they look at the more Commonwealth wide news, then they've seen it. But that's why we expect it's not outside of our expectation that only a few have done it. I have a question. This is Crystal. How would they be able to get the survey to you once they fill it out? If it's manually yep. done. Yep. So there is an address to mail it to. Okay. On the on the survey. Okay. And then we have a way. Um, so if someone were, for example, if we were to have them at the survey or at the charrette, someone fills it out at the charrette and gives it to us, there's also a way for us to manually upload update it, populate it in the system. We have a link that we can do that. Um, and so the same is actually true with respect to just thinking about other ways that we can be getting them out there to the community is if you all know of any like farmers markets that people go to a lot, you can have booths that we have uh, paper copies at. And again, if someone has a, if someone has their cell phone and wants to use it, we can have a QR code there. Just these other different ways to make sure that the community is aware that it's there um, and asking them to take it. And when do you expect these surveys to be done by for your for what you need? Yeah, ideally, I would say by the end of our second charrette. Um, that's when I okay. think we'll have the most outreach. So if we can get the word out there now and some folks are able to take it now and then at the charrette, we let more people know. At the second charrette, we let more people know. That I think we have two planned. Um, apologize if I definitely correct me if I'm wrong, Lisa, if we only have one plan, but that would be the kind of timeline that we're looking for is hopefully we get all of the input by the end of that second charrette because we're taking all the information that we got from the internet, from this the interviews that we're going to be doing, the charrettes, the surveys, compile it all together and, and be getting those those needs assessment, those needs identified. Yeah, for one of the things I'm thinking of is the uh, school that houses yeah. um, September and fall. Yes, absolutely. I I would also, and again, maybe this is somewhere, and I'm just not seeing it. This is Annie again from the school department. Um, it's certainly to get electronic, which is probably the easiest way for people to access uh, the survey in other languages other than English. We can put those out in newsletters and in right various ways. But is there a short? I mean, I see that one paragraph that 
the survey will help to identify barriers to is there a one bullet somewhere that kind of answers to the average citizen like what's in this for me like why am i filling this out so simply to a parent uh you know this does it potentially bring grant funding or greater access or something like that it, is that somewhere this kind of like one bullet what's in it for them why they would be filling this out yeah, it's basically that. I would say it's basically that paragraph at the top of the survey. The paper version of the survey is probably the best capture of what it what it will do. Right, it's helping us get intel so that we can apply for funding. Okay. So this these this feedback will potentially allow the town to access additional funding for internet access right or even just reorganizing right like if the library doesn't know that there's a that the community has this issue this gap this barrier for example being language or uh training or whatever um now the library knows and the library can put staff towards that thing um and so in some cases it's going to be funding and in some cases it might just be recommendations regarding staffing or regarding um, trainings to be made available or again more public sharing of those types of, of resources that are out there. If the issue is cost, then it can be us helping find what are some ways to counter that cost. Yeah, if it's a high low, if it's a if it's a high low income, if there's a lot of if there are a lot of um, uh, residents in the low income brackets, there's um, resources out there to be able to support that. So that's direct funding to the individual or direct um, basically cost breaks on their monthly um, bills. So that's a direct to the person. In other cases, it's going to be now there's going to be people in the library or we recommend there will now be people in the library to help with training on technology. This is Crystal. So basically you set forth as a referral service is what you're saying from what right. I just got. Okay. Yep. Yep. We're just, our whole job is to read the room, help y'all learn what some of the gaps are that you might not be aware of and where applicable, help you figure out where we can apply for funding. So if there is something that makes sense to apply for funding, again, going back to the staffing example, okay, that sounds great, but how do we staff it without any more funding? Well, maybe that's what we're applying for is the funding for that library staff person. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I can ask a question. Yep. On your survey here, um, in the blue box, do you have internet service in your home? Yes or no? Um, we use our phones and a hotspot does that count as yes having internet yes yeah so wireless and fixed are both what we're kind of looking at fixed wireline now that doesn't necessarily mean that's everything that you want it to be but it is access okay thank you yep um so i thought i saw on the budget that there were some monies for um like like getting some of this stuff out marketing and stuff like that is that true yeah we can definitely help with that for sure okay yeah could you remind me of the how much is allocated for it or is that a bill question do you have that available lisa i'm looking right now okay yeah we have marketing staff as well and you know there are lots of um like flyers and things that other communities have been developing that we can base that we know we're working well. There's a lot of guidance that's been provided to us from MBI. So there's consistent language and um, social media posts and stuff like that. We can share as much of that as y'all need. Okay. Um, because one of the things that I'm thinking of is like getting printouts of um, survey flyers um, and not using up all of our toner and having it high quality and using the, a local print shop for it um, and get that reimbursed at some point. If that's a thing. Yeah, or are wait, are you saying that you all would print it and then get reimbursed later or are you asking us to print it and then mail it to you all? Yeah. Either or. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think that would make more sense 
or coordination because it's, it's difficult for us to reimburse, but we could definitely print things out, FedEx it over to you. Yeah, and if we can't find it right yeah. this minute, we'll definitely get you those numbers on what the budget looks like. They could mail it to us, yeah. Yeah, or even have it, you know, coordinate with a local printer so that okay. we have it printed there and then you pick it up or it's delivered. You know, we can, if with your input as to who we should work with, we can definitely do that. Okay. I'm just not positive off the top of my head what that budget looks like in our in our contract. Okay. Alex, where, where, where is the money coming from for the project? It's coming from the Massachusetts Broadband Institute. So we're not responsible for any accounting. They send, they send, they send an invoice to MBI, and MBI pays them. Okay. So we're not responsible for any extra accounting, finances, whatnot. Okay. But we're safe. But we're taking advantage of a forty grand um, project right now. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? As far as the mailing of the surveys, um, it would be kind. It would be a little bit difficult to figure out how many surveys we would need. So, do you think going forward, being um, in a partnership with a printing company here would be better? So this way, we'd know the direction to go in. Yeah, that would definitely be great. Um... Because like you said, we we definitely recommend high quality, low quality, whatever, just getting some flyers out there, putting them in, you know, high traffic areas like the library and schools and well-used cafes and hospitals. Um, but then as far as like bringing printed versions and putting them out for people to use, I think we should probably focus on if we have any um, events like the charrette or like the um, like the. Uh, sorry, like the charrettes, or if you go to any farmer's markets or anything like that, if you all are able to do any of those sorts of booths or attend any of those sorts of events, print those big, you know, stacks of them in case folks would rather take it and do it at home and print and ship and mail it in. Um, but yes, if there's a if there's a printing company that's local that you can have available to print them regularly or even do it as like a, I know we have some that it's considered like a donation um, because it's for the public benefit, that could also be something that you might have a local printer willing to do. Okay, I can reach out to uh, Amherst, see what they're willing to do. Yeah, yeah so in the meantime, what we can do is like prepare flyers, eight and a half by 11 flyers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With like a QR code and the link typed out so whatever is easier for people to use. Okay. Okay. Awesome. And school starting back up, as Alex mentioned, you know, well, regarding this, and said about the internet, but school, the colleges, because we are in a five college area, is starting back. So I think the QR code for them would work, would work great, you know, with them being able to access it. Because they are in the colleges, you know, they go to cafes sometimes to use the internet. So they may have a great input on that generation as right. far as what can be used. Right. Yeah. And that's a good point. If you know of um, the like cafes with public Wi Fi, those are also really great places to have flyers versus printed versions. Right. I was thinking maybe the printed versions can go to like the elderly housing. Yeah, that's great. Deal. Places where the elderly um, may not have access to great internet service, as I do know, quite a few do not. So I think distributing amongst them and even in the library, you know, so parents may just feel like, hey, let me pick this up and see what this is and pass it on. You never know. Yep. And the senior center. Yes. Mm -hmm. Senior center, definitely. Well, we are in the senior center, so I yeah. hope we would <laughs> take advantage of that. Um, um, what and, oh, what languages other than English do you all think that we need to do for like printed materials? Oh, Polish is number one. Yeah. Um, Annie, um, Spanish, uh, Haitian Creole. Um, give me a second. I'll give you the rest of them. We can send those to you too. I yeah. just have to log into my uh, Arabic, Chinese. Yes, 
so I guess adding on to that that action item list for us um, for for us from you, if you don't mind, is the if who you'd recommend that we interview from a stakeholder standpoint, um, support with once we've got those flyers developed um, with with getting them hung up, and as well as either printing and or distributing the printed versions of the of the surveys. Um, and then adding on to that would be those those common languages. We've got some of that again from from the census data, but verifying your understanding would be very helpful. Okay. Um, so my questions for for our next meeting, um, would it be appropriate to work on um, brainstorming who who you should interview? Um, and survey distribution. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. I think what we're envisioning for our, like our next steering committee that we attend is the one, um, I think it was in September um, or October. Uh, and if, I'm assuming that y'all, you're talking, Alex, about having some intermediate ones with your your steering committee, yeah. not in Karina. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That would be great. Okay. So like a next internal meeting between Alex and consultant is to brainstorm the stakeholder and then the survey slash flyer location. What date what did you say? I didn't hear that. We didn't decide on a date yet. No, yeah. I thought she just said, okay, thank you. And when you say help advertise, uh, do you have anything in mind or you want us to brainstorm on how to do that? Definitely, y'all. Y'all brainstorming a little bit would be great. Our our initial thoughts are what we've talked about so far, as far as physical copies, but then also um, the town's social media, the town's website. Um, if Alex can help with that, would also be great um, for those who might stumble across it. Again, we're not expecting so our person. The town website is on vacation, so she's already on the committee. So um, I'll talk to her when she gets back. Yeah, perfect. Those are other ways that when people are on the internet they'll find it and then the rest being those like in person but if there are other again we're throwing out their farmers markets and stuff like that if you all i think y'all brainstorming whether you'd want to have a booth there if there is an organization within the town that would already have a booth that you can just give them the paper copies would also be great and i know that the charrette we're thinking in the fall time frame we definitely want to make sure it's at a location where like underserved communities hard to reach communities so start thinking about a location where we could have in-person meeting where's the best place to hold it and the time as well yeah and then we'll want to start advertising it in the same ways that we're advertising the survey so over the next month we can be advertising the surveys and then we can kind of switch gears to advertising the charrette so charrette's like it's like a um it's like a focus group almost. Yeah, like a public forum with one specific okay. topic in mind. Yeah. Okay. So we you're 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 advocating for one or two? Two. One. Oh one. It is one thing. One. Yeah. Okay. So we could probably shoot for knowing where we're at, no and with like We've still got the interviews to do and everything else and wanting to get some more advertisement of the surveys and wanting to get some of the school engagement. Maybe we shoot more for October. We had said September, October. Maybe we shoot more for October to give more time for that advertisement. We want to make sure more than anything that people are seeing it and that people are coming. Perfect. Oh, and well, when we do this show at, would uh, someone from Kimmy Horn come out to? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um. Alex, is there a way that we could have a, a project website where things could be on the website? I mean, this the, like the steering committee representative, Slidex, um, the survey where they can, there's one, there's one location where we can just show where everything is. And then as this plan lives on, they can also check this out to see the progress. Um, I could talk to Jennifer, but she won't be back for another two weeks. Yeah. Uh, so we'll definitely uh, talk about getting a page together on town website. What did you say her name was? Jennifer. 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 She, she's on the she's on the committee. All right. I know we got a lot here, but does anyone have any other questions? No. 
Oh, I was just going to mention one thing. So, you know, when we talk about online surveys and we're working on a project and we have gotten a lot of English responses and not a lot in other languages, but it's difficult of uh, people in other languages. Like, do they even know how to do it? So like, we're, we're definitely really excited. If you let us know what are the other languages for the printed copies, because it's a little bit easier to digest versus like, I, how do I open this website? Like, how do I do this? So we're really excited. If, um, once you let us know the common languages, we want to have it printed. We want to reach those people that are that don't have access or don't are not familiar with you know how to use a phone all the time. Yeah, that's a really good point. Are if we sure. have a flyer that just says in English, please take this survey. That's not gonna. Yep. Uh, connected to that and broader, it sounds like you do this work throughout Massachusetts. Am I correct in that? Yeah. Um, so one thing I'm thinking for this group, but you could do it just across Massachusetts. If you get this information to the Center for New Americans, um, the Center for New Americans, which is a nonprofit that I think extends beyond Western Massachusetts, then regularly has people who are new learning English, providing those resources, they could take them through something like this. That's just a we can do that here, but you can do that on a broader level across the continent. Just writing that down. And if Center for New Americans is not across the Commonwealth, they can definitely tell you who their peer, their peers are in terms of nonprofits uh, filling that need, addressing that need better. Thank you. Awesome. Um, so the the um so for everyone's um benefit, um it's so for next meeting, um stakeholder um ideas. Um, and um, come up with a, a survey distribution plan. And then me and Bill are going to talk every other week to, to discuss um, progress, which I would then report back. So. Great. So basically, we're going to start distributing the flyers after next meeting. Okay. Yeah. Are we, we going to wait that long? No, no, no I don't think it's waiting. Waiting. If the long. flyers are ready, why not put them out at the library, the senior center, exactly. the town hall? Yeah. No, yeah. no reason not. That. That. Yes. So I think that, um, I, I think, I think it's kind of, sorry, apology, that's confusing. So we have like committee meetings, which is all of you all, but we're going to get, we're going to have like a small group meeting with Alex and ourselves just to, do, okay, where are the locations? The, print, the logistics of the printing, that will definitely be done within the next month, like the next couple of weeks, depending on everybody's schedule. But that would be immediate, though, near-term action item. Right. Mm. We're going to get started on the flyers. The flyers are not ready right this second, but we'll be able to get them turned around quickly and get yeah. them to you all to start distributing. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Um, Annie? Yeah. Uh, if need be, I have connection to the Chinese Immersion School. So if if Excellent. you don't have anything there, I'm happy to reach out Excellent. Um, to you. get their involvement. And That's great. Excellent. You need to be on the Board of Trustees, right? Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. And uh, on a personal side, Jeff Udall says hello. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I miss my friend. Tell him he needs to come back and sub. No, for real. <laughs> Tell him he needs to call me. <laughs> well, he just moved to Long Island. I don't know oh, if you're aware of that. It's kind of a commute. All right. Uh, I'll give him a pass. <laughs> awesome. Um, so thank you so much, Lisa and Cody, um, for giving us a scoop. Um, we know what, we have, what homework we have. So... Uh, unless there's any other questions from the committee, thank you so much. I I have one uh, further comment. I 
I neglected to uh, to try to clerk uh, because of my remote location, and we had notoriously bad internet connection all summer. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, once I'm back in town um, for the fall, I'd be happy to help out at that point. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. That's that's. Um, do you want to be? Do you want to be voting as clerk now? Um, for the next meeting. I mean, for when he comes back. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're gonna do it now. You say right. I can do it yeah. for this meeting. That way we can dive right in it. Yeah. I uh, what do I gotta do? I move. <laughs> Roland's this guy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Roll call vote by Amy. Yes. Susan. Yes. Crystal. Yes. Alex. Yes. Yes. Roland. Oh God. No, I wouldn't trust him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It passes. It passes. passes. Yes. <laughs> um. So we all know. So plan for pretty much the next meeting. Um. When should we have the next meeting? I know we were trying to go for once a month, but should we have it in a couple of weeks? Yeah. Since um, they need some of that information sooner than later. The next meeting with us or you with them? With us. Yeah, I would think it would be soon. Yeah, within a couple of weeks. It depends on everyone's availability. And this way we can... Are you going to speak with them before next meeting? Um, I can the we'll, flyers? I can, we can most certainly uh, schedule a meeting. Um, with them. So how about we schedule it after you speak to them? Okay. And then we can be caught up on about the flyer information and start distributing those. Yeah. Okay. Hold it for sure. All right. Great. Um, if there's nothing else, um, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. 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 All right. Roll call. Or did we just say we're good? We're good. Okay. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> All right. All right. Meetings closed.